Welcome to In The Shop, my name is Clay Croft and today we have the Expedition Overland all new 2020 Jeep Gladiator, codenamed Odin. Buying a Jeep Gladiator for Expedition Overland was a big deal. We've primarily been a Toyota platform for the last nine years. Uh, we are Toyota enthusiasts, etc., and that's why we've done that. But this year the Jeep Gladiator came out and we looked around and we said, hey, you know what, this is a really neat platform. And um, I think we we're all looking to for ourselves to kind of expand our horizons. We wanted to learn something new about Jeeps. Jeeps are a big deal in the overland space. And uh, I've never personally had a connection with them because I've never owned one. So getting into a Jeep this year seemed like the right thing to do. And it's been a lot of fun. Uh, the Jeep Gladiator has a lot to offer. It, uh, it was gonna provide us with an easy platform to build a very capable trail vehicle out of. I will say that it's not the nicest on-road vehicle for long distance traveling. It's windy, it's noisy, it's all that. But the compromise pays off on the trail. This thing is incredible on the trail. And uh, that was something that we hadn't built before. We've, we've always built long range touring types of trucks some of them having more emphasis on off-road, but nothing to this extent. So the Jeep Gladiator answered the call for that. And uh, it, it, it also had other things going for it as well, like a very high payload. I believe it's 1,700 pounds of payload, which is 600 pounds more than a Tacoma, which means that we can outfit it with heavier equipment and it's still within the specs of the vehicle. In addition, it has a massive wheel well space that we can put 37 inch tires under without any modifications. That's a pretty impressive thing to be able to do right off the lot. So let's talk about what we did to the truck. Uh, this is a truck, it's not a Jeep. It is built on its own frame. It, it very much resembles a JL Wrangler from the, the doors forward, but uh, it is on its own frame. It is proprietary to the Gladiator and that's how they got the towing capacities and the uh, payload capacities out of it, which we used to the maximum extent when, we came, when it came to building this vehicle. Like usual, we start from the ground up. We look at uh, what we want the final product to look like and be, and then we adjust everything according from the ground up to accommodate that need. Uh, that typically starts in two places. We knew that we wanted to run a big tire, 37s. We were running the Grabber X3 and 37 1050s. We mounted them on the Icon alloy wheel known as the Compressions. And uh, I think it's a beautiful wheel. Uh, we haven't run this wheel on any of our other Expedition trucks and it just fit the Gladiator perfect. Also underneath, we have the AEV diff covers that uh, replaced the factory diff covers with a stronger, more robust version. These provided a much better filler location and a lot more strength for the Gladiator's axle. The suspension is Icon Vehicle Dynamics 2.5 CDCs, stands for Compression Damping Control. Uh, allows us to adjust the, the damping on the, the truck and uh, control how it rides under different conditions versus, you know, for example, corrugated roads or the highway. We can change how the mannerisms of the shocks work and give us the ride quality that we want for the conditions. The suspension on this truck started off as the prototype. This truck went down to Icon Vehicle Dynamics in Los, near Los Angeles in Riverside, California, and this was the vehicle that they were able to do all their prototype shock uh, builds on. We then took those prototype shocks and sent it on an expedition, beat the heck out of it, and uh, found all the weaknesses, all that, and then just last month brought it back to Icon and they completely revamped it. So what you're seeing here in this video is actually the newest and latest suspension even past our Great Pursuit series, if you watch that. This is the newest, latest, greatest stuff. All of the shocks have been adjusted in the valves, been made to accommodate the airbag system that we put on the rear of this, and the additional weights of the vehicle, which is substantial. Dylan, the lead engineer at Icon, spent a lot of time driving this, jumping this, doing all kinds of things to get it just right, and the outcome is phenomenal. 
Yeah, so we've got the 2.5s in the front, 2.5s in the rear, all billet linkages. They did add a Helloig rear sway bar to stiffen up the sway and to give it better road manners with a fairly top heavy system on it now. The front coils have their hy hydraulic bump stop inside of it so we can take some big hits and it progressively slows down the hit as it comes. Very useful when you hit some stuff, especially when you weren't expecting to hit something. That's when those things really pay off in the overland space. Yeah, so after the suspension was dialed in, that allowed us to start building everything else on top. We didn't modify the front bumper. Uh, when we got the vehicle, it was so new that nobody had the ability to really engineer something new for it. Uh, that'll change in the years to come. Uh, obviously, there's, by the time of this filming, there's even new stuff out now that wasn't available when we built the vehicle. However, the Gladiator front bumper is very functional. Frankly, I don't necessarily see the need to change it. Um, I think if I was to change it, I'd look for something that would raise the bumper up, give it more clearance, fit the body line just a little bit better. But overall, if you were to buy this vehicle, there's no real reason to change the bumper uh, other than aesthetics or higher performance on the trail. Warren equipped us with a Warren Xeon 10S winch. It's one of their top of the line winches and it has worked phenomenally well for us over the years. So that was a no brainer. It keeps the truck light when it comes to the winch side with the synthetic rope. And uh, we terminated it with the Epic Fairlead on the front and the new Sidewinder termination on the cable. The air compressor is mounted in a very unique location. It is tucked in the driver's side wheel well just on the other side into the engine bay. Uh, it, this worked and has worked okay. It did take some uh, I don't know, tweaking to get it right. What we kept doing is, due to the heat buildup of the engine, uh, we kept blowing out airlines. So we had to go through and work with Dark Horse and we wrapped a lot of the lines with uh, heat resistant tape. And uh, basically we finally got it so that we're not damaging air hoses all the time. And it has become a reliable system, but it did take some time. Working our way back, we didn't do anything to the hood. The hood was Amazing, very AEV-esque if you ask me, but uh, very striking. It is a very good hood. I don't see the need to ever change that. We did wrap the vehicle uh, in graphite matte gray and uh, SCS Unlimited here in Bozeman uh, did that for us. They've wrapped all of our vehicles over the years. Turned out extremely well. As you can see here, we have the AEV snorkel. This is one of the prototypes uh, still isn't out at the time of this filming right now, but this is one that uh, Dave got for us and said, you know what, put this to test. I want to see how it fits. I want to see how it works. I want to see the function of it. So we've been field testing this snorkel, this raised air intake for the last four months. No issues. And uh, this one being a prototype is not quite the finished material, but it's very close. They were just getting the tooling perfect when this one came out. This is one of the tooling samples. So yeah, you're getting to see a prototype right here and it's functioned like it should. We're still working our way up from the bottom to the top. Uh, you can see that we have some rock lights on. We put a rigid six light uh, rock kit in here. The side steps here are actually the factory gladiator side steps that we sent to CBI and they built us this temporary step system. Uh, the reason we asked them to do that is because we wanted the additional protection of side steps and we needed the functionality to get to the roof rack and get to the top boxes, etc. So the side steps currently are still in development and will be in production soon. And we hope to have one of the very first sets of those as soon as they become available. But the aluminum side step that they did build us out of the factory one has worked perfect. We equipped the top of the Gladiator with an Ezeon K9 roof rack. We knew that we weren't going to pull the panels off the roof very much. So we decided very quickly that we wanted to put a roof rack on, which kind of permanently keeps your roof together. Uh, the K9 rack is an obvious choice for us. You've seen many other videos, I'm sure, that we use K9 systems. 
uh, from EasyOn. It's just a very proven global platform for expeditions. It's a no-brainer for us. And uh, so we equipped Expedition Outfitters, hooked us up with that, and we use that as the foundation to install a lot of our common goodies. Uh, we put rigid underslung light bar, 50 inch dual light bar. That is one of my favorite light bars of all time. The dual is just, it's in the E series and it's just incredibly bright. It has a lot of long range and still has a lot of spill to the side. We have not installed an S-Pod system to control a lot of these functions on this one because the Gladiator comes with four auxiliary switches. And we have utilized three of those auxiliary switches, one for the air compressor, one for the rock lights, and one for the top bar lights. And we still have one available. That was something we just wanted to experiment to, with to see how far we can minimize uh, things that we plug into. And so far, it's worked out well. On top, we mounted our Max Tracks, of course. We like putting them there because oftentimes we're in twos, and as we're doing recoveries, this is a very quick and easy spot to keep the Max Tracks. They're out of the way, and they're right where we need them when we get stuck, and they stay outside of the vehicle because common, it's common to have uh, Max Tracks get very dirty and muddy, and if they live on the outside of the vehicle, it's, the mess stays outside. The back, we did something a little different. We mounted uh, rifle cases from Alubox this year. A lot of times we've used the 42 liter Alubox on our other vehicles, but these, just due to the length of the, the cab and the roof rack, we are like, you know, this would be perfect for something a little different. And uh, we mounted the gun cases instead, and it's been a great solution. Uh, we've found that we put different things in it, one side has the rooftop tents drop down room folded and laid in up there. And the other side has basic tools and supplies that are lightweight that uh, doesn't affect the overall road manners of the vehicle due to having too much weight up top. We do what we can where we can when it comes to that. Also on the top, there is an Overland Solar 160 watt solar panel. We tied that into the Red Arc Manager 30 that is located in the p -core system uh, to allow us to charge the batteries when the vehicle is static, driving down the road, etc. The Manager 30 from Red Arc has a green priority. So if it's finding that the solar panel is pulling more uh, electricity or sufficient energy into the batteries, it'll run off of that first before asking the alternator to provide it power. Pretty cool. Now, this solar panel placement worked in theory. We have placed it up here and we're still working some kinks out of it. The problem that we know of is that the alley boxes shade the roof panel quite a lot and the max tracks cover the very end of it and it seems to trip up that solar panel uh, from working properly all the time. So there's still some things we've got to work out there, but we'll get it. The most significant improvement to this vehicle is the P-Core system. We've been working with Justin Monticelvo and Patriot Campers for years now, and their P-Core line of equipment, I will say it, is one of the most functional pieces of equipment that we've ever put on our trucks, period. I was first exposed to this type of a tr truck bed called a canopy uh, on the E7 Expeditions. There was a truck built uh, called Sherpa 2, and I was able to work out of that in South America with the folding side doors and stuff, and it was just phenomenal, the functionality of those side doors and the ability to get to things and reach things at an arm's reach. And I couldn't wait for the opportunity to start uh, incorporating that type of a system into our truck builds. Then Patriot Campers came along we were able to use trailers at first, and then now the p -Core, uh, which stands for Patriot Camper Off-Road, came into the mix, and I have never been happier. This is one of the coolest things we have ever done to our trucks. And uh, it dramatically changes the looks of them and the function. So obviously we pulled off the bed of the Gladiator and installed it with the flatbed or tray from p -Core, uh, which was a net pretty much a net zero weight gain or loss, uh, and then we added the canopy on top of it. We ran it around with uh, the tray bed 
for a little while and we loved it. Frankly, we would like to run around with it with just the tray for a lot longer. But he, living here in Montana and going on expeditions and the amount of gear and the type of gear that we carry, we had to put the canopy back on. The canopy offers quite a few solutions. It provides us with a refrigerator inside. It provides us with a power management system, which this truck has now been upfitted with a revolution lithium battery, 160 amp hour battery, which has dramatically improved our power capacities for this vehicle. And the Manager 30 power system that manages all of that. It also comes with a drawer and a dust proof environment. That is the perfect solution for guys that are on the road running cameras, hard drives, drones, things that need to be protected and charged. So we just couldn't get around not having a canopy on this vehicle, uh, even though for kicks, we'd like to have it as just a tray sometimes. The canopy also provided us with a few other things that are pretty beneficial. For one, the ability to mount the spare tire on the rear. Uh, this is a full-size 37-inch spare, and it mounts right on the back, up and out of the way. And put two jerry cans of fuel on the back. Uh, very important for long range. We can either put dual waters or dual jerrys or one of each on the back. And with the mounting hole options on the back of the canopy, it allowed us to put a chainsaw mount where we've mounted our steel chainsaw for bush work when we're out and about. Uh, the tray is fundamentally aluminum. It has steel reinforcements in certain areas, but is made to be as light as possible. The PCOR has boxes on either side and the rear, which we use for all kinds of things, and we store a lot of our fuel things and bug dope and stuff like that that we want access to, tire repair kits, etc. Great place for that. On the very back, there is a full pull-out drawer that we use for tools. And that is one of the very best things that is about that PCOR system is the rear drawer. It's just incredibly efficient and handy to have. Right under that functional toolbox, we've added another very functional tool, and that is a, an additional worn Xeon 10S winch. Uh, the PCOR systems allow for a secondary winch to the rear, and uh, so we went ahead and maximized that option. On the PCOR side pillars, we upgraded the lights to the rigid scene lights. Obviously, uh, it's something that we like a lot around here, and you've seen it on many other builds. It just provides a really great light. The very top of the canopy, we have also installed it with the EZON load bars that mount the EZON 1400 exclusive. And what the exclusive means is that it has a drop down room. It's not just a standard tent, it folds over. An awning essentially drops further out and then a room can be mounted underneath. Pretty awesome for a couple folks that want a lot of privacy and stand up room and dressing uh, from a rooftop tent. It's a great solution. On the other side, we mounted an easy on awning, the 2000. And what we liked about that is it has the metal case around it. We wanted it to just keep the right rugged looks. I've actually over time preferred the metal casing and then the awning inside has a spring-loaded retraction, which is pretty handy as well. I really like that awning. We mounted it on this side because we wanted the canopy to cover the areas that we're working on the side of the vehicle the most. The electronics side, the drawers, etc., the drone that sits in the back of this at times. We could use the awning to cover that area when we're in inclement weather. When it comes to the range of the Gladiator, it has a regular size 21 gallon fuel tank, if I'm not mistaken. As we traveled and toured, we were like, man, it really would be nice to have an extended range on these vehicles. And we did it across the fleet, not just this one. We just wanted all of our trucks to have a longer range. So we contacted Long Range Automotive and they, they came, they stepped right up and helped us. And this truck got a very special fuel tank from them. They had just designed, as far as I know, two JL tanks that were just to go in the JL. And they said, how about you look at modifying it and seeing if it'll fit in the JT? That's something we do a lot here at Expedition Overland. We try things out. And so we said, sure. We asked Dark Horse Customs to help us with that install. 
It did take a high degree of modifications. We had to, more than we anticipated at the beginning, uh, to the point that this is not a viable option for future gladiators. They're gonna do something different, uh, which makes sense and it'll be easier and cheaper. But we got this one done and we did get plus 17 gallons out of this aux tank from Long Range Automotive. There's a gauge on the switch that allows us to pump from the auxiliary tank into the main tank when it gets depleted. So now with a total capacity of 37 gallons between the aux tank and the main tank, we have a range at an average of 15 miles per gallon of 555 miles uh, of range. And we have used it on multiple times now, all of it. It has been a wonderful upgrade. All right, let's take a look at the inside of the vehicle. All right. So stepping into the cockpit of the Gladiator, you can see that we've done a lot of things here. Um, the, I think the first thing that I'd like to start off with is you can quickly see the off-road capabilities that are built into the Gladiator. Just like the JL, you have front and rear sway bars and the Rubicon Edition, which is what this is. Um, front and rear lockers, an incredible upgrade to have factory from Jeep. And uh, in addition to that, we have the sway bar disconnects, all that. And now that we've used it, it's incredible the amount of uh, performance gains that you get on the trail by those three simple functions. The only thing that we haven't done in the differentials, speaking of this, uh, is re-geared th this truck. And it's certainly due for a re-gear. We will do that in the future. But for now, the differentials and everything is all factory. So moving on from there, you can see the auxiliary switches that we use. Uh, those are the only auxiliary switches that we're using to run accessories on the vehicle. We've just really kept the electronics to a minimum on this platform. It comes factory with a 12 volt uh, port here that we just typically never really use. Uh, we try to avoid having clunky things in the dash. So uh, we went ahead and ordered a dual USB 5 volt 4.2 amp uh, USB port instead to replace it with that has a convenient voltage indicator. Just like many of our other trucks, went with the, the very rigid uh, RAM mount for our iPads, uh, no longer the little metal bendy pole. We bite the bullet and spend the money and get the really rigid one. Uh, that allows us to run an iPad here, uh, an iPad or an Android. This vehicle typically has an Android in it that we use to talk to the ICOM 5100A uh, ham radio unit. In addition to the mapping that is found on the Android or the iPads, we have partnered this year with Garmin. And Garmin uh, just launched an all new Overlander GPS device, Android platform, and it has both their drive and their explore functions built into one device, as well as a bunch of other goodies for the Overlander, like campgrounds and campsites, iOverlander, a lot of stuff. It's a whole nother video for her to get into that. We mounted that uh, with this awesome magnetic mount uh, right on the back of the dash here. We also installed the dual USB port up on top so that we can run two sets of electronics here. The Overlander, which magnetically pops onto its charge base. The InReach Mini, is also plugged into that USB port and we have full-time power to both of these devices. Uh, above that, we're running a Garmin Verb, which we have also plugged into full-time power. We use that as a camera support for shooting our show. The ICOM radio is our standard radio that we use in all of our equipment. We just kind of picked the lane and got into those uh, and they have performed really well. Uh, one of the benefits to them is uh, their separate head unit uh, from the main body and we that allows us to mount the head unit in cool places we've done a rear view mirror delete here and instead place the icom radio there uh, out of way we don't have any vision to the back with our p core we have a camera to do that and so it made natural sense to put the radio here because the real estate was available we've tied the microphone to a uh, quick plug down below so we don't have dangling cables or cables in our way. It comes right out of the side panel here where it plugs in and then we use a night eyes uh, magnetic ball to mount the microphone out of the way. When it comes to the creature comforts of the Gladiator, this is considered to be the most luxurious of the Jeep. 
world, um, especially when it comes to Wranglers, JLs, and JTs. Uh, it's the most modern cockpit of all of them, and uh, it really does have a lot of those great amenities that you want in a newer modern vehicle. Heated seats, heated steering wheel, rain-sensing windshield, uh, a lot of that great stuff. In addition to that, the sound system, I've heard some people complain about it, but really, I think it's pretty good for what it is. And it should be, because as you're driving down the road, this thing is like a wind tunnel, and it uh, is numbing to how loud the vehicle is when you're in head-on winds. All things considered, they've done a pretty good job to make a roof come off and a windshield fold down. I don't know how you would avoid that. So all in all, the move to build a Jeep this year has been a lot of fun. I think this vehicle, despite some of its weaknesses, is really made up for in its strengths. Uh, this would be a very hard vehicle to sell for me, to, to move on. Um, it just really checks a lot of the great boxes. It's been a ton of fun to build and it certainly has expanded our horizons and I can understand the Jeep thing now. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for participating and following Expedition Overland and thanks for watching in the shop. We'll see you on the next one.